today. I am in the book of Exodus as I read through the scripture again. And so I'm actually in uh, chapter 9 of Exodus. This is right in the middle of the uh, uh, time when Moses is uh, in Pharaoh's court with the plagues, the ten plagues that came upon the Egyptians before they finally let Israel go and, uh, and leave Egypt for the promised land. In this particular passage, one of the um, one of those particular plagues was a plague of hail. And uh, Moses told Pharaoh that there was going to come, and I believe it was going to be the next day, Moses gave him an exact time of when that hail was going to start. And anything that was left out in the field, any of the people that didn't take shelter, any of the cattle that, was, that were out there, they would die because of the hail that was going to come. Now, there were people in the courtyard of Pharaoh who actually heard Moses speaking in this particular time. And it's interesting that in verse 20 of, of Exodus 9, that it says that they feared the Lord and they caused their servants and their livestock to, to seek shelter. But there were others maybe they didn't hear, or maybe they scoffed at what Moses was saying, but there were others who didn't take shelter. And of course, you know who died, you know who lived. And so what's interesting to me is that when we follow Christ, and when God does miraculous things around us, we can't always be sure that uh, the people are not really listening they are really listening. He is making known himself to these people, just as he did to those in Pharaoh's court. And we should be confident, and we should be assured, and we should be thankful that it is not us who are making Christ known, but it is the Lord's responsibility through us sometimes, sometimes in spite of us, but through us, to make himself known to these people. He longs for that far more than you and I could ever long for. And so here among the Egyptians who were not God's chosen people, people who were not those who were a part of the covenant community, they feared the Lord because they had seen all of these miracles that God had done through, a through Moses and through Aaron and it had made an impression upon them. Now, I don't know whether they continued to follow. I don't know if they uh, left Egypt and made their way to the Promised Land or found uh, Israel along the way and said, we want to join up and worship the God that you worship. I don't know if they did, but they at least knew, and in that time, they had a sense of this is the true God. And that's the kind of thing that we're looking for in this generation. Yes, we would love for people to embrace the God of Israel as we have embraced him, to know the, uh, the, the, the fullness of his spirit as we do. But sometimes, just as he's done for us, it comes in stages. And the first thing that these people needed was to know that this was the true God, that this was the one who was over all others, and he was more powerful than all the gods that they had chosen to worship there in Egypt. And so that's the, that's the lesson here. These people feared God because they saw what he did through Moses. And we don't know anything more about them, but thankfully the Lord does. And he, if, if they united that fear of him with faith in him in some way, shape, manner, or form, he would be drawn to them and he would draw them to himself. We can be assured of that. So we don't really know what happened afterward. All we know is that in this circumstance, they feared the Lord because they saw what he was doing and the power that he had. And they recognized that he was the true and living God, or at the very least, that he was more powerful 
than the gods that they were worshiping there in Egypt. And so we need to be conscious that that's what the world around us is seeing as well. As they watch you and me uh, serve him and experience all of his blessings and his benefits, sometimes the judgments that he brings upon us, people are watching. And, and we need to recognize that they see the God that we serve. Sometimes they'll unite that with faith. At other times, they'll reject him, just as they did in ancient Egypt. Father, we thank you for the fact that you're making yourself known to this generation. We thank you for the ways you do that. Maybe they're not the stupendous miracles that we saw in the, uh, in the plagues of Egypt back in the time of Moses. But we thank you that you're still making yourself known. And as we walk with you and as we're faithful to you, we praise you that people around are seeing and, and fearing who you are. We pray that they would unite that with faith, that they would come to truly know you. And when they do, I thank you that you are a God that is compassionate toward them and you will draw them to yourself and into your fellowship. Thank you again for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I hope you have a great day.